One, two, three. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Twin Life Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ashley. This is Amber. Hello. If you don't know already, uh, go follow us on all the things and um, so you don't miss this episode because we are on top of it lately. We are putting so, out an episode. We are on top of it so hard. And like, I feel like my, my personal life has gotten so busy. Like, wow. Yeah. Just all the things. Yeah. So our next life. week is like, well, I mean, your life is busy with like soccer and stuff. And like a lot of like, I feel like my life has just been like going to work and then coming home. And then recently I feel like my personal stuff. life has like picked up, which is nice. Yeah. We've had a lot, all kinds of stuff to do. I mean, you, you have a pretty active life. Like, you go out on a, like every other week to do something. I don't know. You I know. But I feel like, yeah, I guess. I feel like, I, I think what the difference is, is like the things that I'm doing are things that are more like filling me than like things that are just like me going out and like playing pool and fucking whatever time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyways, let's hop into it. You know okay. I mean? So we have some beverages. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can see the beverages. Um, we normally also... we're drinking water. Our, yeah. Are, our, yeah. our hydros just... are down here. If anybody's wondering. Yeah. Normally we're just hydrating, but we have those set aside <laughs> uh, right now because we are going to try my friend's, um, crafted cocktails line. So like, like I said, if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see us holding them. I'm holding the margarita flavor. Amber is holding the matador flavor. They're both tequila-based flavors. Um, from? Uh, from um, South Norte is the brand. Um, they're local to San Diego. Um, this is not sponsored, but I figured we would just tell you guys we're about what we're drinking. So we try we'll yeah, try we'll put their Instagram and stuff in, in there, and you can go there, and they'll show you. They sell them at like, all these local um, grocery stores around us, like Albertsons and Ralph's, and there's like a few other ones. So... Um, we're going to go ahead and try these. So we are going to try these drinks right now. Um, like I was saying, I have margarita. Amber has matador. They're two tequila-based um, crafted canned cocktails. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be delicious. She suggested that we make sure that we put them over ice like any other cocktail. So ready? One, two, three. A little ASMR. A little ASMR. <laughs> okay. Cute. Ooh. Woo! These are you can smell, you can smell the, tequila. the tequila. Derek said it was he so Derek tried one the other day and he Derek's not a big drinker and he literally drank the whole thing. He was like, this is delicious. And I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, so ready? Cheers. First sips, cheers, cheers. That way that wasn't as good as the that wasn't the best answer. Why is it so like this is plastic? Is one of these plastic? I don't know. Okay, ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's smooth and good. Switch, right? It's, yeah, switch. <laughs> You're trying to switch. Switch. I, I think like I like better. I think I like yours better. Ha! <laughs> that's really good. I like mine better. Okay, so that, Matador. That, that tastes like margarita. Yeah, this is really good. It this tastes, is fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm not met you, but this is great. <laughs> I, we will have to buy more. Yes, these are really good. What is your friend's name? What is her name? Dari. She coaches at my studio. Or oh. at my, yeah, my studio. Yeah. She okay, well, hello. They're very nice. She's also a fitness person. She also teaches like TRX and she coaches there and she's like a fitness person. But so her husband is fantastic. Yeah. I'm so excited for this. I'll start sipping on those more often. Yeah, really good. She said, "Be careful though, because it's a very high alcohol." Content. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, like, I'm not trying to get lit. Ten percent in the can. Yes. Oh boy. So we will be having half, half of one. <laughs> yeah. If y'all see, <laughs> as you're watching, watch the ice is gonna melt. Just make sure we don't get past here, okay? Because that's a bad no. She said. She told me that. She was like, "Listen, like some of these are strong." I'm surprised Derek was. Yours lit. Is ten percent. Yours like a big guy. Yours only seven percent. Oh, okay. Mine's ten. Okay. Well, so if you guys don't know like what that means really, but like a, like a glass of wine on average is like 14%. So this is like this tiny can. Wow. So anyways, this is like, these are really good though for like, I wish we knew about these like in the summer. A glass of wine is 14% alcohol? Yeah. Oh, my volume, like by, I like per that, glass. That's a lot more than I thought. Because I know that like a, like an IPA is like, some of them are like 15%, some IPAs. Between eight and fifteen, yeah, which your average like, like Bud Light, your average Bud Light's like two percent. That's like water. Yeah. Okay. 
So we really want to talk about a couple of things. And this is going to be kind of like a, not a quick podcast, but like, we have a lot of, we're not going to be long things to hit. Yeah. Okay. So first thing is, um, I wanted to cover like a couple of things that's happened in the last like couple of weeks that like, I feel like we didn't get to talk, talk about because we had like very in-depth episodes. Like we did the Love is Blind. If you haven't listened, we did the Love is Blind recap um, last week. And so now, um, I don't know what we're going to recap next, but we'll figure it out. But yeah, go, go listen to that episode. That was a really good episode. Married at First Sight's coming up. Mm-hmm. And then, oh yeah, we'll probably do Married at First Sight. The Love is Blind episode seems to be doing really good on YouTube. So yeah, we'll go ahead and try to recap that. But um, so, pause. I think that the battery's starting to die. On, on the, the phone? No, on the thing. It doesn't seem darker to you? So for a week, we had to do a little bit of adjusting to the lighting, but it's better now because the battery started to die in the light. So anyways, Lovely. yeah, it's way better. You should be able to see us pretty fantastically now. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So a couple weeks ago, so I never talked about this on here, but we did, um, a rage room. So Derek and I have been really trying to, to like do, huh? Was really it was really fun. So, okay. So it was really fun because we'd never done it before. But it was like a lot of work. Like it was like, okay, so we we're kind of on this thing that right now we're like we're trying to do like things like things we haven't done ever. And we're trying to do them together. So we did um, the rage room was one of the first things we did. We've been following like if you don't know like they have the adventure challenge book. It was viral on everything during COVID because it was like a lot of stuff that you could do at your house. So you didn't have to spend a lot of money. So we bought it way back then, but we never did any of the tasks. So we're really trying to get like ten of those done. And we did one the other night where like we had to like write down 10 random words, like draw and like write a poem, which is not my thing, but it was totally Derek's thing. So I was like, okay, that's cool. But I was like, we need to like find some that are like, it's, but you can't see it. So it's like, you can like be like, oh, let's do something that's like killer to you. But I was like, I don't want to keep doing like crafts and like poems and stuff. I want to go do something. So anyways, so, but it's been cool. We've been trying to do that. So we did the rage room date a few weeks ago. And before we did that, where did we go before that? Oh, we went to dinner. So we tried this new restaurant. He's been wanting to take me there since we moved here. It was like, thank you. It was like the first restaurant that he um, went to, like when he visit, first visited here, like on his like job, he was coming here to like get introduced to like the team and everything. So that was the first place he went with the team. And so we went there, but I, it was okay. I think we were both kind of like, because uh, it was supposed to be Italian. And we, I talked to you about this. When I think of Italian food, I think like heavy pastas, breads, cheeses, like just like, oh, you comfort. Comfort. And it was very like Sicilian light. We had like a white fish. We started with like a So it was with, like, more a like salmon. Mediterranean. Yeah. We started with like a um a salmon, um like a uh what was it? It was a some kind of salmon entree. I forget what they did to it, but smoked salmon. It was like a smoked salmon appetizer. And then he I had like the some kind of fish and he had some kind of like linguine pasta like similar to linguine de mare pasta that they have at olive garden it was okay. similar to that so anyways that's what we had but it was like very light and i wanted like pasta but it ended up being good because we did go to the rage room afterwards we like smashed a bunch of stuff and i was telling him like you're only in there for like i think you're in there for 20 minutes it seems like an hour it is such a workout to break things because we had like yeah, uh, crow like bars. Throw. Okay, so that was the thing. The last five minutes, he brought in a bucket of like cups, and there you go. That was that I was like, it could have just been an entire room of me throwing of glass. glass and plates. I've always wanted to do because it wasn't as satisfying to me to like hit things. Derek probably thought probably you satisfied Derek. He loved hitting all the things, but like halfway through, I was like, I need to like throw something, something, explode, <laughs> like shatter. <laughs> I wonder so. if that's a woman thing, like. I feel like women, like we tend to, because men, like, I can very toxic relationships, but they, women's reaction is to throw something, right? Throw something at the man. Yeah. Like, it's not, he's not, like, going to throw the lamp or something. Yeah, he's going to hit something. Hit something. He's going to punch the wall or whatever, like, hit something. So I wonder if that's, like, there's some sort of. I just feel like, for me, it's more of, like, uh, like, there's a result. Like, it's not satisfying to hit something that has more resistance back at you than you can put on it okay versus a plate is just gonna boom and it's gonna explode like it's exciting like it's 
I feel like I don't know. It, that was just way more satisfying for no, me. No, I no, I completely understand yeah. it. Like thro- breaking, like throwing and breaking something, especially when you're not the person has to clean it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. When he brought the bucket of glass, I was like, this made it the best part. So um, we had a lot of fun. I will figure out. They have an Instagram. I'll figure out the location. We'll put it in the description if you guys want to check it out. And you're in San Diego. They have like a bunch of locations all over like Southern California. So if you want to check it out, it was a really fun rager. They also the same place also does axe throwing. But Derek and I were watching it and we were kind of like. I feel like this might have been boring. Axe Ax throwing is so. You've never seen my video of me axe throwing? I've seen it, but like they were there for a while. It, it is seemed like they so were there for a while. Fun. First of all, you never. You don't. You do it and like you don't think you're as good. Like you think you're going to be way better. Like I actually was very good at it. But yeah. I think like people underestimate how hard it is to throw an axe. But I feel like it's, it's so similar fun. to me, like bowling. Like or after you play like two rounds. A you're bay? only in a bay for like an hour. Like you get like a bay for an hour and like you're. But the same with top golf. Like after I hit like ten golf balls, I'm like, oh no, that's okay, fine. That's fine. That's fun to me. So we were just kind of like, I don't know. But if I feel I'm like we're gonna do it. Really you should do it. But Derek stole so actual fun. axes and actual trees. Good, so then he can teach you. I can throw an axe. I just, I don't know. We weren't sure, and I think maybe it needed to be. It. Maybe so it should have been. Maybe the place wasn't the vibe. Maybe we need to find a different place to do axe throwing. Because it just like didn't. I don't know. So maybe we'll try it another time, but we're just kind of like for like sixty dollars an hour. No, because oh, well, actually, a lot of liability. Yeah, but you can find like we. I think when we Blake and I went, it was like we got a Groupon. But was there food, or just sit in a room and for an hour with nothing and just through access? It, you, you make it seem boring, but it really is not. <laughs> it's boring. because it's other people around you, pretty close to you, throwing these axes and like. You throw different size axes and you're like trying if you're a competitive person that likes to do things like it's like know. playing darts for an hour no because there's like four <laughs> seconds along with throwing an axe okay okay maybe we'll have to try it and then if we hate it we won't do if, it. Let us, if you've never been accident before let us know yes. if you which one like convince her that she should go because it is super fun yeah so that was fun and yeah i think that's that was I mean, and everything else is normal. The kids are back in school. They were on fall break. They've been back in school. Um, Yay. And soccer season is coming to a short, to a close, but a rough season. It's long. It's not long. It would be less long if our if our kids were winning. And then we, I would be happier if the team's, <laughs> if our, my son's team was winning. But that's another topic for another day on a podcast. But anyways, so anything from your um yeah there's a few things i um i got like kind of ashley helped with this i got invited to teach a class at a local gym here yep um so really excited with my first yoga class and i'm gonna be bought that i'm gonna have a class and teach every week i'm really really excited about that i think honestly a lot of people come out of teacher training and don't know what they're gonna do and honestly i was at that place where i was like once I have this time, certification, now the certification, now what do I do? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I still had to finish taking my test. And so I like created my Instagram, I put, like curated my brand and all this stuff. And like, I have a full picture spectrum idea of what my brand is, but um, I just didn't want to like make it really live, like make an actual post until so I certified. finished. Yeah. But I passed my test today. So I'm officially... You know what I think you should do is you should start a challenge. Like maybe because September's almost October's almost over, okay. so maybe do a November like pose a day challenge. One of those thirty day poses have challenges, and then you can have people tag you, and then I'll jump on it. I'm always down for a yoga pose. Yeah, and then you have to do a yoga pose, and we have to try to do it. Not that we might not be successful. Well, yeah, because then it allows me to like teach, you know, like teach how to do it yeah and then you can that'll give you a reason to post every single day because you have to post a daily you'll be like hey watch my instagram or my instagram page or whatever we can talk off, off yeah offline. got it see again so all the ideas <laughs> yeah so please go if you haven't if you don't know my instagram page or my yoga page is at amber glow yoga um i'm really excited about it i'm so excited to yeah. i have a this. fitness page also but i'm not usually really using my fitness like i'm using it but i'm not really like doing it like trying to pursue clients and get stuff like that right now um because i don't have time <laughs> so i mean i really honestly don't have that much time to take clients and take students but i'm planning to like 
make time. I mean, if I have to spend a whole Saturday teaching, not a whole Saturday, but a few hours on a Saturday or Sunday on the weekend just teaching clients, I'm totally down to do that. I'm excited. Yeah. So that's awesome. Finally, it took 10 years in the making. It's It's been a it's been the thing that I've been wanting to do for so long that mm-hmm. I've been saying I was going to do for so long. Made so many excuses to not do, and so I'm excited that I finally get to do it. Do it. So I'm excited for you. Um, I'm very proud of you. On the other, thank you, Jen. Um, it's so nice when you say you're gonna do something and you do it. Yeah. Like you start a goal and you complete this goal, and I have completed this goal. It, honestly, I feel like it won't feel real to me like that I'm actually you're standing in the first class until I fin- finish my first class. So I have sitting in the moment and the joy of watching my students in Shavasana and I'll be like, I have taught my first class. <laughs> you know, that will feel good. But enjoying the moment, enjoying the small steps. So I'm very excited about that. Um, on the other side, um, I'm going to go like on a trip, a little trip to LA this weekend. Staycation. Yeah, I'm going to do a staycation, stay at one of our clients for my job. Um, he's with this, this team in LA. Um, it's not this weekend. It's the first two days of the week, so Monday, tomorrow and Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, Landon's doing good in soccer. He scored two goals. Uh, it was basically like a scrimmage thing. So it wasn't really like a game. Like It's a game. It's But I feel like it annoyed me because like I think the kids were, they, are, they know the rules of soccer enough to know that they're supposed to be goalies. Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to be like, um, like, like when you throw the what's when you throw the ball and throw in, throw is it literally called the throw in? Yes. Um, throw in, kick in. Yeah. So like they're supposed to be doing that when the ball goes out of bounds. So the kids are either they're chasing the ball out of bounds and they're expecting like, and, and then stop, they're just like play. they're like new ball and like it literally just looks like you know one of those like cartoons where it's just like the crowds of people aimlessly chasing like something in the crowd. Beehives. Like, yes. Like that's what it looks like and it's annoying and I think it annoys the parents because it's like. Can we actually set it up in a scenario where they're actually playing soccer? Yeah. Because I think they get, and Landon was getting frustrated because the ball would go out of bounds. And then sometimes they would let the kids like chase it out of bounds and keep playing it, like play it, play it, play it. And then other times they'd be like new ball. And like, I feel like they're old enough to understand out of bounds. They do understand out of bounds and they understand the concept of throw in. And like the two coaches that are Landon's regular, like coaches, they don't do that. And I don't know if it's out of, laziness or what but then they had like he had a coach that was like a sub for one of the coaches and he was having the kids do throw-ins yeah i don't understand why we can't do this every time they can throw a ball over their head so okay (laughs) um what was i saying phoenix and soccer i was talking about beehiving yes so so phoenix team they aren't that great with spacing either like they kind of have to learn it but when he first started it was confusing for him because when he started playing for rebels even though they're the same age same age group those kids already knew things like throw in kick in corner all that so i was like i had to figure it out and he had to figure it out and his coach didn't bother to explain it so phoenix just went to like academy where they don't teach you anything to soccer where they expect you to everything. but it's ridiculous that the academy for rebels should be teaching you all those things because by the thought, end you should know it i thought the idea was to get them ready to try out yeah is that not what it's for that's what i was under the impression that it was kind of like a tester to see if they're ready May, again maybe when he gets older maybe it changes like maybe when he's more like phoenix's age is now maybe they start more incorporating more of the rules but I mean, the 2018s, like his friend that plays on the 2018, they play soccer. Like they have throw-ins and corners and kick-ins and facing and stuff. So it's just like, I think it's just like, I don't know. I just don't understand like why you, why a parent would want to pay the amount of money that we pay to do it for their kids to run around the field. Like they could like do that at the park. Yeah. What am I paying you for? Anyways. Landon loves it and it's fun for him. So I'm trying to not do that. I can't do it. <laughs> okay, anyway, it's okay. So, so yes, yeah, soccer. So Landon loves it. It's good. Um, other than that, I got a really co- cool opportunity at work to go do a I got asked by our social team, which again, I am not in the social department. So anytime anybody outside of my department as a person in the accounting team, when we work for a PR company and like the other people in the office, like when I just did my review, just said that they liked having me around and love my energy and all that stuff. So I was invited to go and do, they're doing like a social photo shoot for one of the clients. And they asked me. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And I was like, 
I was like, well, I literally would be like, are you sure? Like, I looked, I was like, are you sure you met? Are you sure you messaged the right person? Right? You messaged like you, re- you met. Is there put- another Amber? <laughs> I was like, is there another Amber? Do you mean to put Amber in this chat? Yeah. Um, they're like, no, we're really, really excited. Please, like, we really want you guys. It was like a specific few people and whatever. And I was just like, so I wonder if they like went in and like looked at everybody. I don't know, but it was, so I'm stoked. I'm, so. Happy, I'm excited for you. I think it's going to be cool. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I know. I'm so excited. I'm so honored. Now I'm nervous a little. I mean, it'll be fine. Yeah. But it'll be fine. Okay, okay. So on the, on the talk, topic of our week, we have to, have to, have to talk about the thing that everyone's talking about, which is the freaking Eros Tour movie. Oh my gosh, concert. guys. It was so good. When I tell you it was so good, like there's so many things to break down, but I just overall want to say like, Overall, I would see it again. It was so, I was, it was just so talking fun. to Derek. So Derek's cousin's wife, she is, she loves, she actually follows a podcast. So hello, if you're listening. She um, loves Taylor Swift also. And she also like loves Love is Blind and like all this stuff. So I wonder if she listened to our Love is Blind recap or whatever. But anyways, so she was posting about it because she went and saw it on Friday. And she's, she's like pregnant. She's due like next month. But she went and saw it and she was like, she's, I was messaging her. I was like, oh my gosh, we just saw it yesterday. Like it was amazing. And she was like, I, I was like, but I really want to go see it again. And apparently it is, it's still going to be in theaters for a few weeks. I thought it was just, just this weekend. Yeah, I know. Um, but so I was like, I really want to go see it again. So she was like, I literally am just waiting for it to go on Netflix or streaming so I can just turn it on and just let it play my house the whole day long. Right. And I was like, me too. Cause it was just that good. Um, so the basic concept of her tour if you've seen her concert in person, great. I'm happy for you. I do not feel like we missed a thing by seeing it in theater. Honestly, I will say that if you want to go see her, I think the experience of going to Taylor Swift's concert and being present in that space and that energy is something I think people really value. For me, I feel like, and maybe that's because now we're in our 30s and we just don't care about things like this. I don't feel like breathing the same oxygen as Taylor Swift makes me enjoy her anymore. anymore. Yeah. So... It, to me, if you're really high up in the rafters in SoFi, you, you can't, can't see, see her. her really anyway. Yeah. So you're really just enjoying and singing it with your friends and the people around you and enjoying the energy, but you're not really enjoying the seeing her. Right. So I think what was great about this was these shots, the cinematography for this was fantastic. And you got to see her minute facial expressions, her energy. Her Stuff personality. That I, I feel like if you were in the theater, you're missing. I'm like, it. how did you know that? Like, you're missing that. There's no way you could see that. And they did have her on the giant, larger than life jumbotron screen, so like some people could see it, but like me, I, there's no way. Yeah, I would see like a Taylor Swift, like figure. Right. I think a lot of people you would have <clears throat> you were, again, it's just being in the room and in the space of her is great, and being present for that moment is great. But I think that. I I like going to concerts, but I'm just kind of like I think I'm a little bougie about it. If yeah. I can't sit close enough to see see her, like what was it? Um, how to lose a guy in ten days, where she was telling about those tickets and for the game, and she he he thought she was taking her to the basketball game. He took her. She took him to Celine Dion. Yeah, and she was like, you can smell, smell the, the sweat. sweat. Exactly. That is how I feel about when I go to. Con- yeah. I and I will and. I was going to go to this, this football game this weekend and I kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I was just like, I honestly would rather see it on TV, like a big screen TV at a bar with friends and enjoy seeing it and getting, and not missing anything. The commentators are explaining all of it. Like yeah. I'm not, and I'm, in, and I can, you know, I can see the yellow line and I know where the first down marker is. I can see the players really um, up close because it's the camera guys down there. And so I think that is kind of the thing where like, yes, like I think it would have been a cool <laughs> thing to be able to go. But until it's in my budget to really go to some of these bigger concerts and really be close enough to really enjoy it. And yeah. I think even still, if you were sitting level with the stage, you couldn't see all the super cool stage effects. That yeah, they exactly. The stage effects for the show were amazing. She, so, okay. So that, that's, what, okay. So I want to get into a lot of that. So we can break it down into parts. The live music band, everything was amazing. So great. The transitions between the songs were great. Um, seamless. If you know her music, you obviously could hear the transition before it happened, which was cool. That's always fun. You're like, oh my gosh, I know the next song it's going to be. That was cool. Um, the, and the band was obviously great. They interacted well. The background singers were all four black women, which was dope. Yeah. 
Um, so we just thought it was so cool. Yeah, and they had such energy. And one of the things that Taylor Swift really leaned into was her walk. The basic, like the the stage was basically her runway. Yes. Because she did that model, and everybody, all of her dancers and her singers had, had to, to do, do that model walk down that thing multiple times. About a thousand times. Yes. Good gracious, the number of steps that Taylor Swift got from walking this long runway yeah. over and over. Yeah. Her energy level is insane. And this show, by the way, was long. Three, three and, and a half, half hours. hours, this thing was. It was three Crazy. hours in, it was three hours by in, on, on film because the transitions, they cut out, like, all the transitions. Like, they cut them down. Some of them they left in because it was a cool transition, but most of them was like, you know there's space between songs when you go to a concert because they have to, like, costume change or whatever. So I think they cut, like, cut the transitions down a little bit because she said it was three and a half. It wasn't three and a half. It was three because we got there at 7.30. We left at 10.30. That's three hours. Did we leave at 10.30? Yeah. It was, like, 11. No, we got home at 11. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I know because I had texted Derek and it was the last song. Okay. So it was like just Well, we didn't realize it was going to be three and a half hours until Taylor Swift said it was three. I was like, oh. But also I think I heard some lady say that. I was like, guys, it was like three and a half hours. I was like, this lady is exaggerating. Nope. No, it wasn't. It, it was didn't long. feel like it though. Mm-mm. Except, but the only time I felt long was when I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but I was like, this is I peed before, so I was really proud that I got to skip through the whole thing and didn't have to get up one time. Yeah. Um, but yes, the transitions were great. I thought the backup dancers were fantastic. They Amazing. were so great. And I, what I loved, again, was Taylor Swift's concert. She did a really good job of showing, embodying the world. Like, her, dan- her dance team, the band, like, her backup singers. Very multicultural. Yes. It was just, you, it was just like a spectrum of every Rainbow. type of person and energy. Yeah, I just thought she did a really good job of being very, very inclusive, but in, like, it was it, it was weird because it was inclusive in like a conservative way. Yeah. Um, I think she did a good job of balancing that. Yeah. Even her costumes were like were were very, very modest for concert attire. Yeah, and they were so cute. Like everything was so like sparkly and sequiny. But then when she was doing anything where she was playing her guitar, she would cover up, which I yeah. thought was so funny. She was wearing capes, full capes, whenever she'd be like playing her guitar, she'd be covered from neck to freaking feet. Yeah. But then when she was like doing her like walks, there were some songs where I mean, Taylor Swift is not the best dancer. Don't come for me. But she's not. No. She's and not. she knows this, but she does some real cute, like, she did a lot of walking. She had a, a lot of skipping. Yeah. Um, she does this thing with her, which hand is it? This hand? The Taylor Swift the, She does hand this thing. Motion a lot. thing. Um, with her hand. She does this. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a lot of choreography with the hand. Yes, exactly. Um, I was thinking about that. I was like, I bet if, like, Jimmy Fallon. And she had, oh, my gosh. Okay. So speaking of her hand, so I bet you, I bet money, I'm calling it now, that people are, after they see this, people are going to start wearing rainbow nails with one chipped nail. One chipped blue one. The light blue one was chipped. One chipped blue one. Because Taylor Swift was on the giant ANC theater with a chip. Who is getting fired? She probably didn't care. She probably chipped it at the beginning of the show. And somebody was like, we need to fix this. And she was like, I really don't care. And she kept it pushing. That's amazing. Because she could have had like some, she could have no, had I, Meg the Stallion nails, but that's not her vibe. No, 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 but it was like I like that they were short. They were yeah. short, natural. She didn't wear a single. She wore heeled boots the entire time. Um, red bottoms. Yeah. Everyone had red bottom shoes on. Yeah. Um, and she had a chipped one chipped nail, which I thought was so cute that she had just like little t- like little like little polished like new nails or rainbow nails and one chipped one. Yeah. Like there are things about Taylor Swift that I think is why it's just why people love her. I think the fact that she, um, I don't know. I, th- how are you that famous, famous and relatable at the same time? Right. And genuinely. Yeah. Relatable. I feel like she never, I feel like when I watch her perform, I still see the 13 year old that got picked on in school. Yeah. But just and she's like, like five, she's five eleven and gorgeous and could have been a model. Yeah. And she's like very talented. We got to see her play guitar multiple times, and we got to Honestly, see her play though, piano I think, multiple I think times. Taylor Swift has an alternate personality. Who do you think it's? Because it's, Beyonce's Sasha Fierce. Right. I, I think Taylor I Swift. I genuinely think Taylor Swift has an alternate. Because, like, the personality that came out, like, you could see Taylor's personality when she was just sitting on the guitar at the piano playing her guitar. But also when she was, like, talking, like, in between. Like, 
you could hear like kind of her awkwardness and her inability to like actually like do stuff like well she had the moment where she like puts her remember they had the piano covered in moss and she goes like put her arm down on it and she's like why why am i she kept trying to like shift it but it was like covered in moss so she she was just like what am i why am i doing what am i doing why am i doing this and she's like okay i'm just gonna put my hands it was like she was like didn't forgot a lot of stuff has occurred on that piano yeah. because they showed like the clips from the other one and like it was pouring rain wherever she was that last one she's like wiping water off this piano um i would say that the sofi show went off without a hitch but it was not a, it was a closed stadium yeah it's sofi they're recording it um the sofi stadium lights itself the over top of the stadium lit was lit from the outside which is really cool yeah. again you're not going to get to see that from inside the stadium yeah her diving into the floor was dope i could surprise you've never seen that on tiktok when, there when was, I tell so there you I'm a, not on TikTok, I am not on TikTok anymore. <laughs> so there was a video where it didn't work. No. So she goes. What like, did she do? She just fell into the floor. Okay, no. please explain to me how. No. She so it's supposed to open, but it never did. So she just walked to the length of the stage, and then I think one of the top, one of the main stage parts, floor boards, I think opened. So I don't know if they dro- like dropped her down. I don't know. I can't. I have to watch the clip, but it was supposed to open. So like the it was like so. Taylor Swift, like, there was a malfunction or whatever with Taylor's transition into the floor. Um, yeah, so there was, like, it's amazing. I've seen a couple of, like, bloopers because I guess you would call them bloopers. And there was one, like, as that showed at the end of the movie where she was, like, she couldn't find her mic, I guess, and her background singer handed it to her. Yeah. She was, like, looking and she was, like, and she started laughing because she was just, like, she was just, like, here you go. She was, like, oh. She, like, <laughs> took it and she just started laughing. And I'm like, that's hilarious because, like, that show, the SoFi show, went perfect, the L.A. show. But obviously not every show went perfect, right? So it's like, and you, she just has to kind of go with it, go with it, you know? And, okay, so there's some other stuff I want to talk about. The one black guy, there's two black guys that, that were great. The one that she sat across the table. Head to the dreads. And say, what was the name of that song? I don't remember the name of the song, but she sat across from the table and they did the whole setup and she like was basically like yelling at him and this the lyrics of the song. Yeah. This man, he was great. He because was so great. You he thought you were literally behind off. Like I low key wanted to like be like cover my face. Like, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm like watching people argue in public. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it looked like. It looked like two people arguing in public. And then to watch her like set a table and like just be like normal. For yeah. a minute was so cool, and then um, and then the other guy that was the the one big black guy that was the backup dancer. Yeah, he, he did his um his uh vogue is the vogue no what no this isn't voguing it's called something else the slappy the oh, I can't think of what it's called. Anyways, because voguing is this, but then they have like this other thing where it's like the arm, like thing. Yeah. Anyways, he did that, and he was so good. He was giving. I'm telling you guys, you will probably see him on TikTok. Ashley was on TikTok, but you guys are gonna see him on TikTok because he was just his energy was so great, and like he's one of the regular backup dancers. So I'm sure you guys saw him, but again, you went in concert, you were missing his, his little stuff. Yeah, you're missing some of his really great moments and his energy. So props to this guy. I don't know who you are, but you were so wonderful to watch. Um, this, I mean, the special effects were great. All the set was awesome. Um, I just think I just felt excited to get to really see it and like the first time we i saw it was i really got to enjoy it um okay so what was your favorite song reputation no what was what was the one no yeah Re- the wait. snake one yeah that was your favorite one or i'm not gonna lie bad blood was pretty when great when she sang our song i was oh, so happy about that, that was cute just it was like her and a guitar. It was very She specifically cute. said, like, this brings her back to her ninth grade. But that was, that is the best part, too, is, like, she introduced and explained, like, again, I didn't know the freaking, I didn't understand the Evermore album until she explained it on the, and I was like, that makes more sense. She was writing other people's stories. Like, she was writing I knew stories. she had mentioned she was writing other people's stories, but there was so much, like, questioning on, like, she writes, has written so much about her relationships with celebrities. That we were they trying, were trying to figure out what celebrity she was talking she, about. But she wasn't talking about anybody. She, she made them about, up. Yeah, fictional characters. Yeah. So then hearing them, and also there's something great about hearing the artist sing it live because they're more expressive. Yeah, and she brings her thought process behind it to life. And her facial expressions and her energy, she brings the song like to life because her songs have a lot of lyrics. 
so many, so many words. And like, sometimes I feel like when I'm listening to them, except for the, the poppier songs are think easier to follow. Yeah. Because, because the hooks of the, the courses are, are short. Right. Um, but my favorite costume was the red one with the black or the one that went with reputation. Yeah. Which the black one with the, it's like the red one with the black across it. Um, I think my favorite suit. era to watch her perform was reputation. Yeah. Red was dope though. Red was great too. Watching her perform the red era was dope. They were the most fun though. I think the red era, well, 89 was great too. Uh, they, okay. So this is what I'm saying. <laughs> I could, I don't think I could pick one. Honestly, I, what I was surprised by, a little bit more AMS, ASMR. <laughs> what, um, what I was surprised by was how many songs from Midnight I knew. There was a lot. I think she performed like five, six. Five yeah. Of them, and I was like, I knew every single one. Right. And I, it surprised me because I was, I actively listened to 89, Red. Like I actively listened to them on repeat. Yeah. So I know those two albums really really well yeah every word um but then when i heard midnight i was like wow i've heard every one of these songs yeah i know the words i was surprised yeah i didn't know like every single verse but like i at least knew the hook and like a lot of the chorus and stuff yeah whereas like with red i knew it from lyric one to the last lyric yeah like saying every single lyric so our theater, so we posted a video, go on, follow us on, go follow us on Instagram. We posted a video on Twin Life Podcast of our, our experience going and seeing the movie in the theater. And um, we had a person that commented and was asking us if, how, what the vibes were in the theater. Boring. And I was told him, I was like, or him or her, I told him, like, it was, the vibes were kind of like, eh. It was okay. Like, we had the little girls that were behind us. And they were kind of a vibe. They were, like, dancing. And they were really sweet. And they were singing loud and stuff. Yeah. But, like, the people around us, like, for a while were, like, kind of lame. And they oh. said the same thing. They were like, yeah, people are kind of, like, quiet right here. But then you go on TikTok and you see all these people, like. So Taylor Lauder did, like, a private show because he and his wife are friends with Taylor Swift. Obviously. Obviously. Taylor, yeah. Taylor, and Taylor. Yeah, Taylor, Because they're Taylor, all Taylor. Ta- named Taylor. Yeah. Uh, they were really good friends with Taylor, so Taylor Lautner did a private, bought out an AMC theater and went to go see it with his wife and their friends. Yeah. And they were, like, dancing and doing the most, and I was like, oh, I kind of want... There was photos of people, like, videos from, like, the UK, where people are, like, going ham sandwich, like, singing and waving their hands. People weren't standing were boring. Yeah. Like, they were at the actual concert. Yeah, that's how it should have been. supposed to be. If you go, you see this, and you haven't seen it yet, or you go see it a second time... Bring your energy. Yes. Because Ash and I were out here just singing. We weren't a big stand-up dance or anything. Like, we would have. I feel like involved. finally people caught on a little bit. But, like, it was so kind of like. But also, to be fair, dude, if we were in a theater with uncomfortable seats, I feel like more people would have stood. We were in cushy, comfortable seats. We were. It doesn't make you want to stand up when you're so comfortable. Yeah, but you can at least sing. We were, like, waving hands. And, like, yeah. I wish we could have, like, video being inside it. I just didn't want to, like, get, like. Intr- like, interfere with other people. Right. It's kind of rude to interfere with other people's experience. But. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. So go see it if you haven't already. Yeah. Let us know what you guys thought of it. Yes, um, please If you've gone to the tour and watched the film, I guess, you know, let us know if you felt like it was different. Yeah. What things you, you know, compare and contrast a little bit. Let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this Brett story and then we're going to get out of here. So there's another podcast that we're huge fans of. I'm a huge fan of called Two Hot Takes. Um, and she reads Reddit stories. It's a great podcast. Go listen to it. You've, it's one of the biggest podcasts in the world. So anyway, she has her own Reddit for that podcast. So I went to her. I was like okay. on her Reddit page and somebody had shared a story from Am I the Asshole? Um, so I grabbed it from the Two Hot Takes Reddit, but it's from Am I the Asshole? Does that make sense? Okay, so the person is posted by haunting dash candy sixty ninety nine. I have not read this story. We're gonna hear it for the first time. It says, "Am I the asshole for for refusing to send my daughter to public school, or ask my brother in law to pay for my stepkids to go to private school?" That title was very confusing to me, so I was yeah. like, I really need to understand the rest. But it has two uh, twenty five hundred comments and eighty two hundred upvotes. So I was like. Okay, people were interested in this one. All right, so it says, I, 25 female. Wait, pause. I'll make sure it's recording still. You just go get loaded. I don't want to finish reading it. Okay, here we go. This 
make sure the little thing looks like it's recording. Okay. I know, but you were just staring. So I was like, is it recording? Oh. <laughs> you were just like, <laughs> I was like, is it, are you there? Oh. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, go. I, 25 female, have a daughter, 8 female. I had her when I was very young. And Clearly, daughter, you're 25 and you're an 8-year-old. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for the math. What's the math? 17. Um, I was very young, and her father was never in the picture. My older sister, 34 female, and her husband, 39 male. That's a, quite an age gap between Wait. her and her older sister. Okay. Um, that's about 11 years between her older sister and her. Okay, so her older sister raised them. Sounds helped, yeah. Um, have helped me a lot, it says. Raising my daughter alone and going to college would have been impossible without them. That's great. My sister is a stay-at-home mom. And my brother-in-law is quite wealthy due to his family's business. They pay for my daughter to go to the same private school as their kids. That is very generous. Again, they basically raised, she raised her sister oh, and her niece. So they have an 11-year-old boy, an eight and two, an eight-year-old daughter and a six-year-old daughter. Um, it's very expensive, but my brother-in-law can afford it. I'm very grateful to them. Oh, excuse me. For giving my daughter more opportunities. I recently got married, and my husband, 36 male, that's an age gap. She's 25, <laughs> her husband's 36. Holy moly. Um, has three daughters, 12, 9, and 7. Ooh! There's so, there's, so many things so there's, about this. There's dynamic. so many kids. There's four of them now. Okay. Uh, so they, go to, they go to a public school, which is good, but not as good as the private school my daughter goes to. Last night, he told me that he thinks it's, it isn't fair. Uh, last night he told me <laughs> that he thinks it isn't fair that my daughter goes to a forty thousand dollar a year private school when his daughters have to go to public school. Sucks to suck. Make more money. Facts. <laughs> he says that next year I need to either send my daughter to public school or ask my brother in law to pay for his daughters to go. Stop. <laughs> Let me finish reading this in the <laughs> Or ask my brother-in-law to pay for his daughters to go to private school. I told him that I'm not doing that because I want my daughter to have all the opportunities I didn't have. I went to a shitty inner city public school. And my brother-in-law can't afford to send seven kids to private school. He got mad at me and said that our kids are siblings now and everything needs to be equal. Am I the asshole? You know what you're the asshole for? You're the asshole for marrying him. Definitely not. What? Are you, is he serious? You want another man to pay for your children to go to school. And it's not your ex-wife's husband. This is your wife's brother. I can't imagine being and he, like. And he has the audacity to tell her she needs to ask. It's a difference. Do they not have this conversation? What? <laughs> Before this is not this is a pre-marriage this conversation. This is why I was in a relationship for six years and didn't get married. Shit like this comes up when you don't when you wait. Don't talk. Yeah. When you wait because they she met the man, swept her off her feet. They had a great time. She's got she's single mom, so she's all right. Cool. You want to marry? Great family, blended family. Cool. Now all of a sudden, out the blue, he's like, "Oh yeah, by the way, we're married, but also you uh, need to have my." Y'all didn't talk about that before. I was gonna say, like, my daughter has been going to this school the whole time the whole we dated, time. the whole time we ma got married, the whole time we planned the wedding, and you just did it. That didn't occur to now you. Now all of a sudden, it matters. I'm out. I. <laughs> there's so I just feel like okay. There's a lot of things, right? So obviously, you live with us. Landon lives with us. If for some reason, Derek was like, hey, I really want our sons to go to the same school. We can, Let's send them. To, I'll pay for them to go to the same school. Fine. But that would be, he would have to offer that. That is something that should be off, like, that if the brother-in-law offered, hey, it would be really cool if, like, my new, they're not even related no, to this No, but the, this is the thing. Like, this is the difference, okay, between that and this. One, it's not three kids. Yes, but also... That man probably was around when she was really little. Yeah, he helped raise her. So he helped raise her. So that's not his niece to him. Yeah. That's like an extension of his children. Daughter. Yeah. Yes. So to him, it, he's not thinking about it as like my niece. I'm and they niece. probably lived with him. Yeah. yeah. They probably all lived together for this whole time. She probably didn't move out until she married that dude. Yeah. <laughs> so like, this is. 
I gotta tell her, read what people said. This is asinine. So you she say, thinks she's okay, an so asshole. you say, she, not the asshole. I, she's not the asshole. No, he is. He is the asshole. He should have written in. Yeah, am I the asshole for <laughs> wanting my, am I the asshole for wanting my sister, no, my for bro- wanting my, my new wife, my new wife's brother-in-law to pay for my kids to go to school, private school. Yes, sir. $40,000 a year. So you want this man to pay another, per, a whole house for your kids to go to school and they're not even his, they're not even related, not even related whatsoever. No, not even, not even related. It's his sister-in-law's I think it, I think it would even be different if, say he didn't have kids, they had another kid. Yeah. That would be different to me. Yeah. Because then, but also they, in preparation for knowing that their oldest daughter goes to private school, they could probably figure out how to send this other one, not having three children already. This, the younger one to private school between the two of them. They were yeah. just like, can you, if you can continue to pay for one, we will pay for this new one, this yeah. new child. Yeah. That to me be different. The uncle's like, no, 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 I got it. It's fine. Like, I, I'll do it. But not three stepchildren that are already, have two parents. If you want to send your kids to private school, you and your ex-wife get some money together and put them in the private school. Okay, what are the, what are the things? <laughs> so it says... OP has offered the following explanation for the, it's called the judgment bot of Am I the Asshole. He's a mod. Okay. He says, the, the clarification is, because the title was confusing, Am I, I might be the asshole because my daughter goes to a very expensive private school while my stepdaughters go to a regular public school. Is the, basically to explain in case we didn't understand that. We got it after you read the story. Yes. Very clear. The, the title I didn't get. Okay. So, let me see. Overall vote. Not the asshole. Good. 100%. 100%. I am excited <laughs> to read these comments. Okay, this one has 13.3 thousand upvotes. First it says, not the asshole. <laughs> That's the first thing it says. And then it says, did your husband express any of these thoughts and entitlement before Bam! you married him? <laughs> you nailed it, twin. If not, it's a huge red flag. <laughs> huge with a capital H-U-G-E. <laughs> That he's getting this attitude right after you married him. The thing is, legally, he has no rights whatsoever, but it might be a good idea for you to keep an eye on his changing attitude in general because it's bound to happen with other things too. Facts. Uh, um, okay. I wouldn't, so, split, oh, so I wouldn't he split, responded. I wouldn't split nan thing with this man. You no, better make sure all your stuff is in your name. Some, yeah, something. Okay. Ugh. Because what if, like, the stepbrother... Like has the daughter like, is like entitled to or, some I'm sorry, sort of the, the brother in law has, has a, like set her up a trust fund or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You don't want this man getting the access to that. She probably has a college fund. She probably has a trust fund. Yeah. Like her uncle took really good care of her, and she this man is butt face. Yeah. Her husband. Okay, so Op says he never talked about this before we got married. He said he's just starting to notice that his daughters, especially the twelve year old. Think it's unfair for their stepsister go their stepsister goes to a fancy private school. This is the most reverse Cinderella story I've ever heard in my life. For real. Uh my sister also buys my daughter more expensive things sometimes. And I think that adds to the issue. Oh, okay. So they have money, so they like give the old the they give her daughter a lot of like expensive stuff and they don't give the step kids stuff. They're not their kids. And he's like yeah, it's okay. We're going to make it happen. Uh, the audio will be fine. Okay. Um, okay, we'll read a couple more and then we'll be done. So it says, then your husband has to step up as, as a father and explain that other people in this, in this life will get different, different sets of hands dealt to them, even between family members. And you can't always get the same as your siblings slash step siblings get. Like your daughter doesn't have her father in her life, but the stepkids have their father. Facts. Yeah. The 12 year old is old enough to understand familiar relations and why your sister and brother in law are so involved in your daughter's life. We'll put this one in the description, but I mean, I feel like that was very clearly that she wasn't the asshole. That's the most outrageous, not the most outrageous thing. That's pretty freaking outrageous. That's, that's so ridiculous to me that she's such she entitlement. That. The fact that he had the, the nuts to ask her. Who are you? To be like, I, not even I say like, hey, I think it's a good idea. Like, no, I think it's unfair and that you need to make this happen. Because my, my, cause my, because my daughters are starting to feel inferior. Well, I'm sorry, sir. You married a girl. You, like, this is her life. If it was her actual dad, you're expecting, like, 
Say it wasn't her. Say it wasn't her. Her uncle who was buying her stuff and yeah, her aunt. Her dad. What if it was her dad? He's gonna be like, nah. Like you got. You're taking her to Disneyland. You have to take my kids with you. No, you can come, but you can also pay for your own kids. <laughs> yeah. Like you can come to Disneyland. Like I leave in like. Maybe we can split a hotel or I'll cover the hotel. You, but you pay for Disney. You know what I'm saying? Like, just like we went to Great Wolf Lodge, like you, you got Great Wolf Lodge through your job. So then like when we went, like we kind of like split a lot of the expenses or whatever when we went, like I paid for the stuff for Phoenix, whatever. Like we kind of like just did it, but you, you like your work, whatever covered that. So that, and that's a sense, like, that's just common sense. Like you just, anyways. This has been a very interesting episode. We've had all the technical difficulties. I apologize in advance. If you're listening to the audio version, you probably won't even notice because I'll have brilliantly edited this that you won't notice that there's difficulties. But if you're watching on YouTube, there's been lighting issues. There's been focus issues. I don't know what's happening, but we got it done. We did get it done. So Amber's going to be gone for a couple of days and I will be editing this. But um, just a reminder, um... Go grab these drinks. They're South North Tay. South North Tay. Go grab them in the description. Um, they're, well, the news and Instagram, all that stuff. Um, again, this is not sponsored by them, but I just wanted to shout them out because I think that their product their is delicious. Their product is so delicious. Much. So, anyways, and I'm all about helping small businesses, local businesses, all that stuff. So, anyways, oh, also, I've never mentioned this on here, I don't think, but Derek and I have a gourmet popcorn business. I'm not really throwing that out there. If you guys are interested and you live in the area and want gourmet popcorn, we do have an Instagram for that. We'll throw that in the description box. If you want to support Spicer's Popcorn, um, we have a lot of really good flavors, a lot of fall flavors and stuff. So you guys can jump on that also. So lots of good stuff for the fall, lots of good stuff for the holidays. I know popcorn is popular in the holidays, so you can order some of that. And good stocking stuffers. Yeah, great stocking stuffers. Yeah, for sure. Anything else? No. All right. We made it through. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.